Hey, Gobe here. Sorry, Wobe here with a guide on Welt, the coolest and the strongest grandpa in space. He is a beast of a DPS whilst also providing immense utility, having one of the only abilities that can cancel enemies, though not on Twitter just yet. For those skipping Lunae but itching for some pure imaginary damage, perhaps versus the new swarm disaster, well Welt can help you out. And the quote for this video is why he doesn't actually need 67% effect hit rate. So we'll go through his stats, abilities and how they work with all those bounces, traces and his idolons, as well as how much DPS increase they provide, and then his pros and cons. And then we'll discuss his best relics and his needed stats, and then his best light cones, and finish with rotations and team compositions. If you like these guides and you want more, please consider liking and subscribing, it really helps me out, and I'm doing an in-depth guide on every unit in the game, updating when wrong. Himikos is next, and then we've got Fu Xuan. Finally, credits to NLRM for some bonus calculations in this video. She is pretty much the best theory crafter in the game for Welt. Anyway, let's begin. Welt is a 5 star imaginary unit and part of the standard 5 star units in the game. He follows the Nihility path, which is the path dedicated to controlling and debuffing your enemies. At level 80, his base HP is 1125, his base attack is 620, his base defense is 509, and his speed is 102. He has an energy cost of 120 and as a Nihility unit he has a lower chance of being hit than the tankier pass. All around decent stats and above average on everything, pretty good. Now for his abilities which a lot of people get it confused about. His basic attack, Gravity Suppression, would deal a standard amount of imaginary damage to a single enemy, dealing 30 toughness damage whilst regenerating 20 energy and 1 skill point. We'll discuss his talent, Time Distortion, next. When Welt hits an enemy that is already slowed, Welt deals additional imaginary damage to the enemy, so that is hitting, whilst the enemy is already slowed. We'll see why this is important, and remember imprisonment has a slow built into it, which counts for this talent. Anyway, this additional damage can crit of course, and makes up a huge sum of his damage. His skill, Edge of the Void, is a bounce skill. Unlike Asta and Sampo who have 5 hits, 4 being bounces, Welt has 3 hits with 2 being bounces. Wilt will deal a good amount of imaginary damage to the selected target and then repeat this hit on a random enemy two more times. On top of that, on every hit there is a base chance of reducing the enemy's speed by 10% for two turns. This base chance increases with level. So at level 10 with a 75% base chance, the probability of failing is slow on a single enemy is lower than 5%, provided you have at least 20% effect hit rate. The slow is on hit and his skill has 3 hits. So you take the probability of not landing the slow and multiply it by itself twice. The probability of not landing the slow is 1 minus the chance of landing it, and the chance of landing it is your normal effect chance calculation. Remember this is on a single enemy and multiple enemies make his slow chance and potential damage a little bit sad. Furthermore, his talent comes into play with his skill. It is on hit and his skill has 3 hits, so you can slow on the first hit and then your next 2 hits will activate the talent buff and do additional damage. At E0 and level 10 skill and talent and a slowed enemy, this skill can deal nearly 400% modify value. So, his skill will deal 30 toughness damage per hit, up to 90, and regenerate 10 NG per hit, up to 30 NG, whilst consuming 1 skill point. His ultimate, Synthetic Black Hole, is an AoE damaging ultimate. It will deal a large amount of imaginary damage to all enemies, with a 100% base chance to imprison enemies hit for one turn. Imprison, just like its break in prison counterpart, will delay the action of enemies, and then reduce their speed by 10%. This slow stacks with his skill slow, for a large amount of enemy turn manipulation. You also push back the enemy a bunch, which means his slow is even stronger. This ultimate can proc his talent of course, but unfortunately the imprisonment from his ultimate will be applied too late for the talent, so the enemy has to be slowed before the ultimate, with his skill, or for example with a weakness break, which will apply imprisonment before the attack. Furthermore, his ultimate has 2 hits in it, so it can proc the talent twice per enemy hit. The benefit of his ultimate is it can cancel or delay enemies large attacks, if you time it before their move. Some bosses will need their action cancelled early on to delay their action combo before their big move, and some elites can get their enhanced action cancelled if you imprison them just before their next action. There are however some attacks that are just guaranteed no matter what you do, but you can delay them. An example is Frigid Prowler that will eat its children if you let him, giving him a large damage boost. You could just kill the adjacent enemies with a strong Welt ultimate, but what's more heroic is timing his ultimate in between Frigid Prowler's two actions in his turn and stopping him from going down the route of cannibalism. And then murdering everyone regardless. This ultimate costs 120 energy, will do 60 toughness damage to all enemies and refund 5 energy. 
Finally, his technique, Gravitational Imprisonment, is a dimension technique, so you can stack buffs and even use a damaging technique whilst inside. He will create a dimension, and enemies inside will be slowed in the overworld. When entering battle with the enemies, Walt has a 100% base chance to imprison the enemies for one turn. This is different from his ultimate and can stack, and will delay enemies' actions by 20% whilst reducing their speed by 10%. You can only have one dimension at a time, which only Himiko has at the moment. Dimensions are awesome because it works for every wave of enemies. So in Memory of Chaos, every wave will have a chance of being imprisoned. The slow lets him start up his talent for lots of damage, and the pushback in general allows for your team to safely take the first turn. Now for Traces. His first ascension passive grants his ultimate a 100% base chance of applying a 12% vulnerability to all enemies for 2 turns. Without other vulnerabilities, this is a straight up 12% damage boost for your whole team against said enemies. Very strong A2. His second will regenerate 10 extra energy upon using his ultimate, now letting him regenerate 15 energy. This is needed for his rotations and is a must activate. His final one will make him deal 20% more damage to enemies inflicted with weakness break. He has a lot of toughness damage and pushbacks, which means his passive can actually have a ton of uptime. It's a nice amount of bonus damage. His trace stat bonuses grant him 10% effect resistance, which is whatever, 28% attack, which is immense for him, and 14.4% imaginary damage, which is lovely. Now onto his Eidolons, some which are actually pretty game changing for him. His E1 grants his ultimate a new effect. After using it, his next two uses of basic or skill are now enhanced, dealing additional damage equal to a percentage of the basic or skills multiplier. This can crit, but the description is a bit misleading. It is only one extra amount of damage, even for the skill that can bounce three times. It also doesn't activate his talent. So his basic at level 6 will now deal an extra 50% of his attack after his ultimate, and his skill gains an additional 80% of the 172% bounce, or 57.6% of his attack as damage. And this E1 is a 6% DPS increase. His E2 is pretty big though. When his talent is triggered and this has no cap or limit, Walt regenerates 3 energy. This is of course affected by energy regeneration rate 2. This lets his rotation drop a turn from either 4 to 3 or 3 to 2 when considering an energy rope a nice 7-13% damage increase from the added ultimates on top of more utility. His E3 skill increase boosts his high damaging skill and his E1 since it's based off of the skill for a 6% DPS increase. His E4 is a pretty nice quality of life Eidolon. Whilst it doesn't explicitly boost his damage in calculations, in actual gameplay it makes him so much easier to use. As his slow now has a 112% base chance of landing, you only need 49% effect hit rate to guarantee versus 40% effect resistance. His E5 boosts his high damaging ultimate and talent for another 6% DPS increase, on top of some additional delay. His E6 is the ultimate increase for Walt and is his best Eidolon by far. When using skill, he now has an additional bounce, and that doesn't sound like much at first. But that's an extra 10 energy from the skill, that's 3 extra energy from his E2, that's 30 extra toughness damage, that's 79.2% extra attack worth of damage, and then another 66% from his talent. This also lets him 2 turn ultimate without energy rope, which is disgusting. It also makes all of his previous Eidolons better, pretty much, on top of being a boost in itself. If we look at his level 12 skill versus a slowed enemy, it will now deal 580% of his attack, 644% if you include his E1. It is bad form though to compare modifier values to gauge unit strength. For example, Yanqing only does 350% of his attack in his ultimate, but he buffs his crit value by 240%, he has a higher base attack, Speed buffs, additional damage procs. Zeela has an innate resistance penetration, she has damage percent buffs, etc. Regardless, Welp becomes even more of a powerhouse at E6, and when you get it one day, you'll be happy, unless he's super power crept by that point. Let's now discuss his pros and cons. His first pro is his crazy AV manipulation. Constant delays, stackable slows, and imaginary breaks on top. Welp is the premier unit for telling the enemies it's not their turn on the PlayStation. His AV manipulation also benefits team survivability, since enemies that don't take turns won't do damage. Finally on this topic, his AV manipulation can cancel or delay enemies' strong actions, leaving them dazzled from the black hole you just created in front of them. He is one of the only units in the game that can do this. Another pro is that his damage is nice for someone who's originally supposed to be a debuffer, and building him as a DPS is really the best way to go. A final pro is he can complement some playstyles very well, as we will see in synergies. For cons, we have his effect hit rate needs. His slow has a very low chance, but I guess the 2 turn duration of it combined with the bounces means it's not all that bad in a single target. However, for his ultimate, this is combined with the debuff resistance enemies have. Lots of enemies have imprison or crowd control resistances, so you won't really be bringing Welt into them. 
Furthermore, his slow and skill damage is hard to hit on your desired target when there are multiple enemies, facing the same problem Jing Yuan's Lightning Lord has damage wise. He also has anti synergies with units that need enemies taking turns. Finally, his stat optimization is very annoying. He needs your regular DPS stats on top of needing effect hit rate. So, let's look at relics. The obvious choice is the Wasteland of Four Piece. The crit rate buff is very easy to get since he applies a few debuffs himself, and the crit damage buff comes from his ultimate. Since he will delay enemies a bunch too, this crit damage buff can come on for multiple turns. Do you remember though that the enemies have to be imprisoned before the attack, so it's the attack after his ultimate that will get the crit buff, unless your ultimate also breaks the weakness of the enemy. Do note also that the crit buffs do not count as him gaining crit, it's more of a buff to the attack itself, so it won't count towards planar ornament sets like Inert Salsotto and Rutilant Arena. Other choices include a 2 piece combo of Wastelander and Musketeer, or a 4 piece Musketeer for a universal and easily farmed set. For playing ornaments, his best bet is Spacing Station. His stat optimization is rough, and going for a lot of crit and effect hit rate leaves his attack low enough that Space Healing Station is best. Inert Salsotto is his next best option, but requires you to hit the 50% crit rate mark, or 42% before its own crit buff. Rutilant Arena requires too many crit substats for a tiny increase in damage in my calculations. For main stats, he will go for a crit chest, ideally getting you to a 1 to 2 crit ratio, then speed or attack boots, then imaginary damage percent orb, then energy or attack percent rope. Energy rope will have a better rotation until E6, but attack percent rope provides a ton of damage increase for weld. Even with the additional ultimates and large external attack percent buffs, energy rope won't beat out attack percent rope. So if you want him to carry, attack rope, and if you want team utility, energy rope. For boots, there is the possibility of attack boots only if running with Aster or Bronya. For substats, you want effect hit rate, attack percent, and crit all well balanced. A good crit ratio to aim for would be 50 to 100. Going more crit and losing attack percent will lose you damage unless you run in with attack buffers. At that point, you can consider a 60 to 120 ratio. Either way, make sure you also pick up effect hit rate. You'll need 11 subs maximum to obtain 43% effect hit rate, and here's why. To guarantee a 100% base chance debuff versus 40% effect resistant enemies, you need 67% effect hit rate. That's why Pella, for example, aims for this when you include her trace. Walt has three 100% base chance effects, and a slow that has a 75% base chance. However, two of those 100% base chances are in prison effects. So when compiling all enemies with 40% effect resistance or higher, all of them have in prison or crowd control resistance apart from the Fantilia fight. So what this means is your extra 24% effect hit rate, going from 43 to 67, has much less value. Pella would gain her defense shred being guaranteed, but Well only gains a 7% increase in his chance of imprisonment. You pretty much just want to avoid bringing him into these enemies, and a lot of them aren't even imaginary weak. This means you save 6 subs worth of effect hit rate, which is a difference in 35 crit value. We can see in this chart I made that the more subs you put into effect hit rate, the higher the crit value is in equal crit subs, and the lower the potential crit value you can have on your welt is when considering a standardized substat distribution. You want to cap your effect hit rate at 43%. Now for the slow you might be asking, how bad is 43% effect hit rate? Well, since you won't be entering battles with 40% effect resistance, we can calculate versus 30% effect resistant enemies. This gives us a 75% chance of landing our slow. The probability of not landing it versus said enemy is 1 minus this chance multiplied by itself twice. So we have a 1.5% chance of failing our slow. That is pretty negligible when considering the ultimate slow and the 2 turn duration of the slow. Versus multiple enemies, it's a bit annoying, but 75% is still high, and even with 67% effect hit rate, the odds would not be improved that much. For Light Cones, his best in slot is Incessant Rain. It provides him with two very desired stats in effect hit rate and crit, and the additional vulnerability is very nice. A second option, and much less limited, is Good Night Sleep Well. At S5, with a secondary debuffer, it's quite close in damage to Incessant Rain, and some even calculate it to be higher. Very close behind is his signature, giving him attack percent boost for his skills damage and talent hits during his skill. It won't work if you buff your ultimate just after your skill though. The damage percent is nice too, and the effect hit rate is pretty cool to have. I rate all three pretty much equal, with Incessant Rain being my favorite for the easier time building him. Loop is a great free to play option too, but replace it with Good Night Sleep Well when you get it for the high base stats. For rotations, they depend on the rope and eidolons. For E0, attack rope will grant you a 4 turn rotation guaranteed with 4 skills or 3 skills and a basic snuck in there. With NG rope, you can get a 3 turn rotation guaranteed with 3 skills. At E0 and NG rope, you can also go for a supportive rotation with 1 skill and 3 basics, granting skill points for the squad, but doing little damage. For E2, you can get a 3 turn rotation with attack rope now. His ult hits 2 times for 6 extra energy, and his skill hits 3 times for 9 extra energy. 
so you can 3 skill or even 2 skill and 1 basic at E2. With Energy Rope you can do a 2 skill rotation now, provided you have 2 enemies or 1 enemy and Von Wack, but Von Wack makes your damage worse. Finally at E6 you can get a 2 turn rotation with just 2 skills and you don't need an Energy Rope. It's pretty nutty. His skill has 4 bounces at E6, giving him 40 base energy, and each bounce grants him 3 energy for a total of 52 energy per skill. Going for other rotations and dropping damage is probably not that great. For Sinji's we have the usual DPS buffers and Nahid TD buffers, since he should be built to carry. His best support according to NL Rem is Bronya on a fast Bronya build. However the second best is Yukong and I'd like to discuss Yukong. She provides attack percent, crit and imaginary damage percent, even more so with planetary rendezvous. She's an excellent buffer for Welt and can let him do some insane damage for a unit who's supposed to just be an offensive debuffer. Her buffs compensate for the low stats he has too when building for effect hit rate compared to standard DPS. I also love Silver Wolf with him, especially at E2. Her debuffs are excellent for damage and nearly all quantum weak enemies are not weak to imaginary, so she can provide mono imaginary support. Furthermore, his delay means her debuffs have even more effectiveness. Finally, Silver Wolf E2 reduces his effect hit rate needs by so much and can let him forego most of his effect hit rate subs and fully commit to the crit DPS he was born to be. Dan Hung is a nice DPS to pair with the supportive wealth for the slows that benefit both of their kit's DPS. However, these days I'd say the Sinji is nice, but there are better units out there, and Welt as a carry might just be better. Dan Hung in Babatalune may benefit from Welt for the Wasteland set uptime, however, it's just 40 crit value and it's not even permanent. And then the only other thing Welt has is a potential 12% vulnerability. Welt's damage ramp is just way worse than a Ting Yun or a Yukong or a Bronya, so he's not needed with Lune. Some anti synergies are of course dot units like Kafka, Sambo, Luca that don't want enemies being delayed. Others are Blade and Clara who want enemies to take turns to hit them for more counter damage. For team comps, Mono Imaginary is my favourite, Yukong, Silver Wolf, Welt and Luwacha. This provides so much damage amp for Welt and into all quantum weak enemies you guarantee the imaginary weakness which is awesome, doubling the amount of enemies you can face. A Bronya team comp is good too and if you can provide the skill points so that Bronya and Welt can constantly skill then this allows Welt's damage to skyrocket. It isn't reasonable to get 3 skill points every turn of theirs though, except with maybe E1, S1, Bronya and someone like Pella Luwatch on the side. Finally, if you do want to run Dan Hung, then Welt, Dan Hung, Asta and Natasha can be a very nice team, and completely free to play outside of Welt, kind of. Your speed will go insane, Asta can buff both DPS just fine, and the enemies won't take turns due to the slows and delays, so you're going to end up taking like 50 turns before the enemy does. This will also allow Natasha to solo sustain just fine. It's a great beginner team and great free to play team. Anyway that's all on well if you like this guide and learned something, like and maybe consider subscribing to catch my next guides. Thanks to all my amazing members, thanks for watching and have a go bidet.